Week 12 of the 2024 fantasy football season is in the books, and we're headed right into week 13 of the fantasy season. We got three Thanksgiving Day games on Thursday, a Black Friday game, and a full slate of Sunday games, and a Monday night game. No teams on bye week, so you know exactly what we need to do. We need to go through every single matchup, go over every single wide receiver, and talk about who you should be starting and who you should be sitting. Before we do so, let me remind you guys that Underdog is the place you want to be if you want to get in on additional fantasy football action all season long. Underdog's NFL Pick'ems for Week 13 have already gone live, and Underdog is giving all new users a free NFL Pick'em for Week 13 when you sign up using promo code the catch that link is down below and on top of that underdog is also giving all new users who sign up with promo code the catch a 50 percent deposit match up to one thousand dollars so that's a free nfl pick them to use towards any of week 13's games and up to one thousand dollars in bonus cash when you sign up using promo code the catch on underdog so let's start with the first of three thursday games on thanksgiving day we got the bears traveling to face the lions and there might be a little bit of life for this bears wide receiver room uh let's start with dj moore 26.9 fantasy points in week 12 against the vikings seven targets seven receptions 106 receiving yards and a touchdown big fantasy day Two straight weeks since they've uh, the Bears have made that change at offensive coordinator where DJ Moore has seven targets and seven catches, 13.7 or more fantasy points. Another good matchup this week against the Detroit Lions in a game where you would expect the Lions to shut down the run and force the Bears to throw the football. And the Bears have been throwing the football quite a bit in the last two weeks since making that change at offensive coordinator. And Keenan Allen, 15 targets in week 12, nine catches, 86 receiving yards. And a touchdown, 23.6 fantasy points for Keenan Allen. Let's be careful here. We don't want to just go chasing points. I mean, Keenan Allen had 21 fantasy points in week six, then 9.4 or less for four straight games before this past week. Roma Dunze, on the other hand, uh, 8.9 points as last week, 12.5 the week before. So what we do know is that the Bears are throwing the football a lot more. They're throwing the football much more efficiently. But overall, we're getting some volatility when it comes to these Bears wide receivers. So the safest play here is DJ Moore, your wide receiver one. The other two are flexible, but good guess, really guessing who's going to come through with the uh, best fantasy day between Roma Dunze, who has 10 targets in the last two games, and Keenan Allen, who had eight targets in week 11, 15 this past week. So tough to say, but they're both definitely flexible, once again, in a game script that should force the Bears to throw the football. Caleb Williams has not looked too bad, to say the least, throwing the football the last two weeks. Now, we go to the Lions. Amon Ross St. Brown is dealing with a knee injury, so maybe keep an eye on that one as we move into uh, the first game of Week 13. But as long as Amon Ross St. Brown plays, you are starting him. His first game without a touchdown this past week since Week 2 of the season still had 12.2 fantasy points, 7 targets, 6 grabs, 62 receiving yards. He has a single-digit fantasy day, does twice on the season. He's the wide receiver two so far on the season. Not much more to say. As long as he plays and that knee injury doesn't keep him out, we are starting him. Jamison Williams lives in that flex range. Good flex option on a weekly basis. The last two weeks show that 11.8 fantasy points in week 12, seven targets, five catches, 64 receiving yards the week before. Big play, big touchdown against the Jags, 22.6 fantasy points. Good floor, very high ceiling, risk, some volatility, but you know the ceiling is there. Jamison Williams, really the definition of a true flex option on a weekend, week out basis. Anybody else involved here? Khalif Raymond, uh, Tim Patrick, Allen Robinson. I mean, there's just nobody else from a fantasy perspective. Maybe if Amon Ra misses this week, we can take a look elsewhere, but uh, I'm expecting 
Amon Ra to start this week and Amon Ra and JMO to be your options for the Lions wide receivers and fantasy this week. DJ Moore, your primary option for the Bears, but still got a little bit of upside if you need to flex Allen or Dunze in week 13. Well, everybody's eating, trying to stay away from an awful football game. We will have the Giants traveling to face the Cowboys to get the uh, Tommy DeVito, Cooper Rush Thanksgiving Day Bowl that everybody's been waiting for. But let's take a focus on the wide receivers here who will be hopefully catching the football from Tommy DeVito and Cooper Rush. Let's start with Malik Neighbors, who did have 12.4 fantasy points in week 12. A very disappointing game and a great matchup in a game script where the Giants needed to throw the football, but you know, just wasn't getting done with Tommy DeVito quarterback and neighbors got most of his involvement late in the game, but nine targets, six grabs, 64 receiving yards did have 12.4 fantasy points. I'm still going to leave neighbors as a start, kind of a lower end start, but I still think he's perfectly fine here. You don't need to bench him or anything depending on your other options, but uh, there's a safe floor here. It should be another game script where the uh, Giants need to throw the football. So I'm okay with Malik Neighbors, but he's the only Giants wide receiver I'm going to mention this week. I mean, for the most part, the Cowboys defense played pretty well last week, if we take away the fourth quarter. But, um, you, you know, I, I just I got a bad feeling about the Giants offense this week. I'll put it that way. But, you know, Rondell Robinson, 9.7 points this past week. Darius Slayton, zero. And Jalen Hyatt, zero. So, yeah, I'll say go with neighbors, and that's it for me going into this matchup. CeeDee Lamb should be fine. Um, we look at week 12, 16.8 fantasy points, 12 targets, 10 catches, 67 receiving yards. Uh, we've talked about Lamb over the past couple of weeks. He'll be fine as the season progresses. And Cooper Rush, honestly, has not been that bad the past two weeks Call me crazy, but 247 or more passing yards in the last two games, two passing touchdowns in week 12, one passing touchdown at least in week 11. It does kind of seem to have a fumbling issue, but luckily none of those fumbles, unless we look at week 10, have turned into lost fumbles. Um, I will say Cooper Rush is dealing with a knee injury. And CeeDee Lamb is dealing with a back and foot injury, but don't forget CeeDee Lamb has been questionable like the last two weeks and has played, has come through with 16.8 or more fantasy points in his last two starts. So um, I will say I feel more confidence in CeeDee Lamb and Cooper Rush than I do in Tommy DeVito slash Malik Neighbors, but ultimately... Uh, I still think Neighbors and CeeDee Lamb are very startable this week. Jalen Tolbert, Devontae Turpin, not going to be options, but Turpin is somewhat interesting as he has some involvement in the return game, as we saw this past week uh, and the week before he had that big touchdown against Houston, but that would be like a 16 team desperation play outside of that. I'm not interested. Jalen Tolbert did have a touchdown this past week and 10.2 fantasy points, but not a lot of consistency there, not a high ceiling. So lamb neighbors starts everybody else leave them as sits going into week 13. Those of you who want to get a underdog, pick them in on Thanksgiving Day. I'm going to take a chance on C.D. Lamb to score a touchdown. Has not scored a touchdown since week eight of the season. So he's due for a touchdown. It's Thanksgiving Day at home against a Giants team that's really feeling like they're falling apart. So if you want to be able to have some investment in what's going to likely be the worst game on Thanksgiving Day, Take CD Lamb to score a touchdown on Underdog. And don't forget, all new users who sign up on Underdog with promo code the catch that link is down below are getting a free NFL pick'em for week 13 of the season. Take your free pick'em. Take Lamb to score a touchdown. Once both of those lines hit, you're gonna automatically triple your cash entry. And on top of that, Underdog is also going to give you a 50% deposit match when you sign up with promo code D catch then our final thanksgiving day game is an interesting one for wide receivers as we have the dolphins traveling to face the packers let's start with the dolphins wide receiver room and boy oh boy okay let, let, let's break down tyree kill first six targets five catches 48 receiving yards 9.8 fantasy points i mean this is just I, I hate this situation when it comes to the dolphins wide receivers so you can still flex Tyree Kill, who is dealing with that wrist injury still, is technically questionable. Uh, this Packers secondary, nothing to sneeze at. G.R. Alexander missed week 12. His status is up in the air for week 13. It is a short week, so we'll see what happens there. But 
Yeah, like I'll just leave Hill as a flex. I mean, what are you going to do? 19 fantasy points in week 11, 11 in week 10, 12 in week 9, 9.8 this past week. Not a super high ceiling. Needs that touchdown. I Johnny Smith overtaking this offense. Devon A. Shane overtaking this offense. And Jalen Waddle, nine targets, eight catches, 144 receiving yards, a touchdown, 28.4 fantasy points in week 12. His only double digit performance on the season other than week one against the Jaguars. So maybe Jalen Waddle is also starting to overtake this offense. I don't know, but it's just one of those head scratching situations. What happened to Tari Kill this season? So Hill still startable, can still flex him. Still be your wide receiver, too, if you don't have better options. But I just don't know what the true upside with Hill is. Then we look at Jalen Waddle. I know last week I was very low on Jalen Waddle. I've been low on Waddle for weeks and weeks. Wasn't one of these guys telling to go out and trade for Jalen Waddle, buy him low. Haven't had Jalen Waddle in the start category in weeks. And I was like pretty persistent this past week at the point where I'm like, I'm just going to drop Jalen Waddle. And I also said it at least once last week. Waddle's probably going to pop off because I'm talking extra smack to him this week. And um, the production is there now, but is it going to be there in week 13? I would not bank on it. He's flexible, but only because he's coming off of this game. Uh, I might, I'm close to doubling down and still saying, I don't think Jalen Waddle's going to have a very good week this week and that you shouldn't start him, but maybe this trend continues. If you want to flex Jalen Waddle, I'm not going to stop you, but I will say once again, we got no bye weeks, no injuries going or massive injuries going on for wide receivers this week. So do you have to start Jalen Waddle? Look at your options. You probably have better options going into week 13 for the Packers. What do we do? This is my least favorite wide receiver room in all of fantasy football. Feel free to flex any of these guys. It's a bad matchup against the Dolphins, but if you want to roll with one of these three players, I know Dobbs has a concussion, might not play this week, short week. He probably won't play. You want to flex one of these guys, go for it. But my advice is probably stay away from this bunch. The Miami Dolphins pass defense is no joke. Jaden Reed, 5.6 points this last week. Romeo Dobbs, concussion, 8.4 points. Christian Watson dropped what should have been a big touchdown, but even then, that would have been his only catch on the day. 0.4 fantasy points for Watson. So I hate this wide receiver room. I'm getting close to being done with these wide receivers as well. If you're interested, Dentavion Wicks had 3.5 points this past week. I guess my argument is still, especially if Dobbs doesn't play, that Jaden Reed is the most startable player here. But at this point in the season where we need crucial wins and we're trying to trying to secure bye weeks and trying to make it into the fantasy playoffs and secure a playoff spot, like, do I really want to rely on the Packers wide receivers? No, especially in a bad matchup against the Dolphins. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen here. Jalen Reed feels like the invisible man at times. Dobbs is banged up. Watson can't catch. Wicks doesn't do anything. Tucker Craft's scoring touchdowns. Josh Jacobs is scoring all the touchdowns. I would probably try and stay away, but if you need to flex a Packers wide receiver, sure, go for it. Take your chances. You never know what's going to happen. Let's move along. Let's move along to Black Friday, where we're going to get the Raiders traveling to face the Chiefs. And... You got a bunch of guys who I think could be good, could be okay. Let's start with the Raiders. Jacoby Myers, big day in week 12 and a bad matchup. We talked about this going into week 12, right? Jacoby Myers comes through in tough matchups. When he played Denver in week five, 13.2 fantasy points. This past week, 22.1 fantasy points, 15 targets, 10 catches, 121 receiving yards. He's been a very startable player throughout the course of the fantasy season when healthy, a good flex option. We look over his last four starts. He has 17.2 or more fantasy points in three of those four starts. Gardner Minshew's out for the season. We do have Aiden O'Connell returning to practice as he has been on IR dealing with that thumb injury. And we do have Desmond Ritter hanging around too. So I don't exactly know what to expect out of the quarterback play for the Raiders this week. I don't know exactly what to expect out of Jacoby Myers this week in another tough matchup. But the last time he played the Chiefs, he had a touchdown and 17.2 fantasy points. So Myers, very startable still. But given the quarterback situation and the matchup, I'm so a little shaky on Myers. Like I said, he comes through in, in good or bad matchups for the most part. Week 11 against Miami only had 8.8 .8 fantasy points. But 
I don't know. No bye weeks. No crazy injuries going on. He's a flex option, and I'll leave it at that. In terms of anybody else here, Trey Tucker did have a nice day in Week 12, but we've seen no consistency out of him on the season. DJ Turner had 2.5 fantasy points. Tucker, if you're wondering, had 15.2. But like I said, I mean, you look back to Week 5, 6.5 or less in every other or 7.7 or less in every other game since week four. So staying away from anybody other than Jacoby Myers when it comes to the Raiders wide receivers. Now we look at the chiefs wide receivers. Um, Hopkins had a nice day in week 12 against the Panthers scored a touchdown, six targets, five grabs, 35 receiving yards, but 9.6 uh, or less in his last two games after the big game against a really bad Tampa Bay secondary. So He's in the flex area, and I'm just going to leave him at that. You know, I think he's a bit touchdown dependent. Haven't really liked him as more than a flex over the past couple weeks. Has some upside, but eh, not my favorite start this week. Xavier Worthy, same amount of targets this past week as DeAndre Hopkins, but just 9.1 fantasy points, four catches, 46 receiving yards, no touchdowns. Uh, he's getting most of the first read looks on this offense, but yeah, I mean, guys like Noah Gray, Travis Kelsey, for most weeks, the running backs, those are the more involved players in this offense. Hopkins and Worthy are flexible. We get Isaiah Pacheco back this week. Does that impact things? I don't know. I mean, this is just not a crazy high ceiling offense when it comes to fantasy as much as we want it to be. So Hopkins, Worthy, they're startable depending on who you have. Uh, we'll see what kind of game script we get against the Raiders. Not exactly sure how it's going to look. Juju Smith-Schuster, McCole Hardman, anybody else on this team not starts as we get into week 13. All right, moving along to Sunday, we're going to start with the Texans, who will travel to face the Jaguars. Nico Collins reminded us why he was the wide receiver one in fantasy before he got hurt in week five. 20.2 fantasy points in week 12, nine targets, five catches, 92 receiving yards, and a Tutty, and he gets a great matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. There is no way in the world you are benching Collins in week 13. Tank Dell, I was a little low on this past week. I mean, he wasn't great. wasn't bad. 10.2 fantasy points, five targets, three catches, 72 receiving yards. But the ceiling is just really low for Tank Dell. He would definitely be in the flex category and probably really realistically is in the flex category this week. But he gets the Jaguars, so if you want to fire up Tank Dell, you can. He can basically start anybody against the Jags and cross your fingers, and your chances of a good fantasy day are probably there. But as far as anybody else on this team at the wide receiver position, John Mechie, Robert Woods, Xavier Hutchinson, not enough consistent production from anybody. Nowhere near a high ceiling for anybody else, so I'm setting every other uh, Texans wide receiver going into the week. Uh, I will say, I okay, starting Brian Robinson Jr. this week. The Houston Texans secondary is not very good. B. Tom in his last start in week 11 since the Jags were on bye week in week 12, 13.6 fantasy points, seven targets, five grabs, 82 receiving yards with Mac Jones at quarterback. So I do think this is going to be a rough day for Mac Jones and company and the Jags offense. But the one player that I will say I am definitely okay starting is Brian Tom is probably closer to like a flex area for B. Tom because I don't see a high ceiling if he doesn't score a touchdown. But uh, he's still very startable going into the week, and I wouldn't be overly concerned if I own Brian Thomas Jr. Parker Washington, anybody else, Devin DuVernay, uh, Tim Jones, those are the other wide receivers on the Jags right now. Gabe Davis on IR, Christian Kirk on IR. Yeah, let's start Brian Thomas Jr. Let's sit everybody else going into week 13. And I'm banking on a huge day out of Nico Collins against the Jacksonville Jaguars. His current line on underdog is 80 and a half receiving yards. I'm smashing this line. He hit that this past week. He should have hit it in week 11 with that big touchdown call back. And he has hit that line in every other game on the season except for week five against Buffalo. Great matchup for Collins this week. So I'm heading straight to underdog to take the over on Collins total receiving yards. Don't forget, all new users who sign up on underdog with promo code the catch are getting a free NFL pick em for week 13. Take your free pick em. Take Collins total receiving yards. Once both of those lines hit, you're going to automatically triple your cash entry. And on top of that, as long as you sign up with promo code the catch, Underdog is also going to give you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000.
Except we got the Colts who will travel to face the Patriots. And let's start with Josh Downs, who probably won't play this week. I still got him on the screen. He has an asterisk. He's probably not going to play. Um, he's considered week to week. Very unlikely he plays, especially with the Colts having a bye week in week 14. But it was a little bit more up in the air when I put together today's video initially. So he's on the screen, but don't count on him playing this week. And even then, like, if he does play, what is his production really going to look like with the shoulder injury? So I'm okay starting downs, uh, but it kind of is probably not going to happen. So let's just leave it at that. Then Michael Pittman uh, did come away with 15.6 fantasy points in week 12, seven targets, six catches, 96 receiving yards. He should get a pump or a bump, excuse me, in production if Josh Downs is out. Maybe he's a little bit better at Downs on the field. I don't know. Uh, he had eight targets in week 11 compared to Josh Downs' as five, and he had seven this past week tied with Josh Downs at seven. So Anthony Richardson, okay with Michael Pittman, just as much as he's okay with Josh Downs. Don't freak out there. Decent enough matchup against the Pats. I mean, they're a decent defense, but they're not fantastic. So you need to flex Pittman this week. I'm fine with it. And yeah, I mean, I guess Downs really should be closer to the flex category, but also it looks like at the time of recording this, he's probably not even going to play this week. Uh, any other Colts wide receivers, Alec Pierce, A.D. Mitchell, Ashton Dolan. I mean, maybe they get a little bit of increase. Um, Ashton Dolan's actually injured right now too, but maybe somebody else here gets an increase in volume. You could take a shot if you're super desperate in a super deep league, but outside of that, I'm just staying away. And yeah, I'm still staying away from the Patriots wide receivers moving forward as well. Pop Douglas, the most startable wide receiver for the Patriots. He has nine or more fantasy points in his last four games with a ceiling. Of 11.3 fantasy points, but at least he's consistent. Uh, the number one pass catcher on this team really feels like Hunter Henry at the tight end position in terms of anybody else here. Jalen Polk, Kayshawn Booty, Kendrick Bourne. There's just no consistency. The ball spread all over the place. So staying away from all Patriots wide receivers. You're absolutely desperate. You need some points. Bob Douglas will probably get you some points, but the ceiling's not high going into week 13. Up, we have the Chargers traveling to face the Falcons. And I will remind you guys, I have to record these before Monday Night Football. So if any serious injuries happen or if anything changes my mind, it'll be in a pinned comment down below. But I'm expecting a good game out of both Lad McConkey and Quentin Johnson against the Baltimore Ravens. Lad McConkey is active uh, dealing with that shoulder injury, but he gets a great matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. I'm expecting good floors at worst out of both McConkey and and Quentin Johnston, and they get another good matchup in week 13 on the road against the Atlanta Falcons. So I'm leaving them both in the start category. Maybe you end up flexing one of those two guys and, you know, based on where you drafted them or got them off the waiver wire. But I think they're both going to be solid starts again in week 13. Josh Palmer, the odd man out here, not going to be an option unless we see an injury to McConkie or Quentin Johnston. In terms of the Falcons wide receivers who were on bye week this past week, Keep rolling with them. Drake London's still a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. I know it's a tough matchup, but I'm okay with starting uh, the Falcons wide receivers and the Chargers defense. I mean, once again, Monday Night Football has not been played, but uh, they weren't so great against the Bengals, and there's a chance they're not so great against the Ravens. Uh, they're kind of starting to teeter-totter as the season is progressing here, but they're still a good defense. Don't want to sneeze at them, but London, solid start. Darnell Mooney, um, the hamstring injury should be good. At the time that the Falcons play this week, we'll see what happens. But uh, all signs are indicating that he should be good to go this week. He's a top 15 wide receiver in fantasy football. If you want to flex him, that is completely fine. Ray Ray McLeod, the odd man out here. I mean, he was decent in week 11 with 10.6 points, but way too hard to call when he's going to have a good day or a bad day. So I'm sitting him going into week 13. Next up, we have the Seahawks who are going to travel to face the Jets. Let's start with DK Metcalf, who, listen, I, I'm still okay with starting DK Metcalf. Okay. I know JSN is doing whatever JSN is doing right now, but Metcalf will be fine. The volume was not promising in week 12. Don't get me wrong, but he's still a very startable player. Maybe like he's really become your wide receiver too, or maybe even a flex option. 
but he's still worth starting. I am not afraid of this Jets defense right now whatsoever. I'm not afraid of this secondary. Sauce Gardner is not even having that good of a year. Metcalf is going to be perfectly fine. He's still a good start this week, and JSN has essentially become a must-start player. You start to break down these stats and all the yards after catch that JSN is having. I don't know if that's going to keep up, but until it slows down, I'm considering him a must-start player. He was in the must-start players list uh, last week, right? And we're going to keep rolling with JSN against the Jets this week. I really have been saying it in every video. I think the Seahawks might come out on the road here, but that final nail in the coffin on the Jets season, if uh, there's anything left in the Jets season or any hope for Jets fans, which I don't think there is, but anything left uh, I think could be done after this matchup uh, between Seattle and the New York Jets this week. So JSN, a good start this week as well. 19.7 fantasy points in week 12. He has 19.7 or more fantasy points in three straight games with a ceiling of 37 points. Start him. Tyler Lockett, sit four or less fantasy points in his last two games. Moving along to the Jets, I'm still okay starting Garrett Wilson. Maybe he's closer to that flex area. It is kind of hard to say right now because we don't really have an update on what's going to happen with the Jets quarterback situation, but the trend is pointing towards Aaron Rodgers probably playing this week. So I don't think we're going to have to see Tyrod Taylor. Um, at the time I recorded the running back video, it was still kind of up in the air, but it looks like Rodgers is going to play in week 13 and not hit IR. We'll see if that stays the circumstance. So I think Wilson's fine. I know the last two weeks have been really bad for Garrett Wilson, but Still a good matchup here. I know Seattle played better defensively this past week, but uh, I'm okay rolling with Garrett Wilson. I just don't want to start Devontae Adams, okay? Initially, I had him as a six. I was like, if Aaron Rodgers ain't playing, then I'm definitely not starting Adams, right? But ultimately, I just don't think there's any real upside with Devontae Adams. Hard to say. Maybe he shows up for you, but no teams on bye weeks this week. I'm just staying away from Devontae Adams for now. He's a bench player for me. Probably don't have to drop him quite yet unless we actually see Rodgers head to IR. But yeah, uh, let's just leave Adams as a sit. I still have confidence in Garrett Wilson. That's just me. If you don't, that's fine. Maybe he's more for a flex option. Maybe you want to start other players over him. That's fine too. But here's what I got for the Seahawks and Jets going into week 13. So we have the Titans traveling to face the Washington Commanders. Calvin Ridley has really emerged since the D-Hop trade as a consistent fantasy wide receiver, moving up to the wide receiver 16 on the season with 9.8 or more fantasy points in every game since week eight. The 9.8 game in week 11 against the Vikings, he had a touchdown call back. So, you know, Ridley's been very, very consistent. 14.3 fantasy points in week 12, six targets, five catches, 93 receiving yards for Ridley. Keep rolling with them. This commander's defense, I don't really know what to think about them right now. They are kind of the definition of a wishy-washy defense. They are at home, but, you know, I think Calvin Ridley can come through on the road here. So continue to roll with Calvin Ridley if you want. Nick Westbrook-Akini, we have talked about on the channel for several weeks in several of our videos, Sneaky Starts videos, last-minute waiver videos, stuff like that. He has a touchdown in every game except for Week 10. Since week six of the season, he has double-digit performances in four of his last five games, 12.8 fantasy points against the Houston Texans. Now, the volume's kind of low, only two catches in each of the last two games, but you can't take away the fact that he has a big touchdown in both of those games. And yeah, I, I'm just tired of calling him anything less than a flex. He's a good flex option. You may have other flex options you have more confidence in. That's fine, but for those of you guys in deeper leagues, dynasty formats, whatever, Nick Westbrook-Akini is an option in fantasy moving forward. Tyler Boyd, not so much of an option, but he did come through in Week 12 for what it's worth in a good matchup against the Texans. And I will say, Will Levis is throwing the football with much more efficiency over the past two or three weeks. Uh, I mean, he still has some fumbles and interceptions because he's Will Levis, but he is throwing the football much better better than what we saw towards the beginning of the season, which is good for these Titans wide receivers. Then we look at the Washington Commanders. Terry, Scary, McLaurin bounce back in Week 12 after a dud in Week 11 against the Eagles. 21.2 fantasy points, six targets, five catches, 102 receiving yards, and that big 86-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. You take that away, he was having a really bad day, but 
you can't take it away, right? And he's had double digits in every game since week three, except for week 11. He's your wide receiver four on the season. Keep rolling with Terry McLaurin if you own him. It's not a great matchup, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, Noah Brown did have a big week this past week, but yeah, I'm not starting any commanders wide receiver uh, other than Terry McLaurin as we get into week 13. Next up, we have the Steelers who will travel to face these Cincinnati Bengals. George Pickens coming off of a down game in the snow, which was a good matchup on paper, but the weather kind of ruined this one. And yeah, there's some questionable stuff out of Pickens in this game, but that's George Pickens for you. Just 8.8 .8 fantasy points, seven targets, four receptions, 48 receiving yards. It does kind of feel like he's been the bad recipient of a lot of like uh, offensive PI calls and stuff called back and all that stuff throughout the season. But ultimately, Pickens is still a strong start in a good matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals this week. When you look at everybody else here, maybe Calvin Austin could score like he did in week 12. Maybe Mike Williams could show up, although he has one catch in the last three weeks, just coincidentally was a big touchdown. Uh, maybe Van Jefferson does something. I don't know. It is a good matchup here. This Bengals secondary does not scare me whatsoever, but I just can't trust any of these other options, especially in a zero bye week week in week 13. So let's start Pickens, and I'm going to sit everybody else. Jamar Chase, we will never sit ever again for the remainder of his career in the NFL unless he is injured. So uh, let's fire him up. Even a stiff matchup against the Steelers, I don't care. Uh, did not play in Week 12 as he was on bye week, and he is still your wide receiver one in fantasy. One single-digit performance on the season outside of that. 11.3 or more fantasy points in every single game with a ceiling of 55.4 fantasy points on the season. You own Chase, you start him, and a story. T. Higgins, very good in Week 11, coming back from injury, had 29.8 fantasy points in that shootout with the Chargers. Higgins, when healthy on the season, has only given you single digits once in Week 3 against Washington. Every other game, 12 or more fantasy points. And in some games, he's had more targets, more receptions than Chase. I mean, Higgins has been fantastic on the season when healthy, he just hasn't been very healthy on the season as he's missed five games. So when Higgins plays, we play him. End of story. Anybody else on this offense at the wide receiver position, I'm not interested in. So let's stick with our studs in this matchup. Pickens, Chase, Higgins, Stardom. Anybody else going to be a sit for me in week 13? Next up, we got the Cardinals who are going to travel to face the Vikings. And Marvin Harrison Jr., man, I mean, I know he was close to catching a touchdown against Seattle, which would have put him in the double-digit mark, but it's just really inconsistent. We look since week 7, 5.1, 23.1, 3.4, 16.4, 7.7 is all over the place. It is a good matchup this week. I expect this to be a game script where the Cardinals need to throw the football and are forced to throw the football since the Vikings are better against the run, to say the least, than they are against the pass. So he's still a startable player, still a good flex option. I think he's a strong flex option, but... I know if you're a Marvin Harrison Jr. owner right now, you have perceived confidence in MH Jr., and it totally makes sense, but I think he's still a good start going into the week, even if you kind of downgrade him to the flex. Greg Dorch, Michael Wilson, not enough production here, not enough consistency, not good enough fantasy stat lines, not starting either of them probably anytime soon. Justin Jefferson. Very quiet day, excuse me, against the Arizona Cardinals, or excuse me, against the Chicago Bears in week 12 was getting double team, triple team, mainly was seeing Jalen Johnson in this game, five targets, two catches, 27 receiving yards, but this is Justin Jefferson, don't overthink it, he can pop off, have as high of a fantasy day as anybody in the league at any moment, he's the wide receiver three in fantasy, single digits twice on the season, double digits in every other game. Don't bench Justin Jefferson. Don't overreact to last week. No reason to do so. Beneficiary of this past week to Justin Jefferson not doing a whole lot was Jordan Addison, who had 30 fantasy points, nine targets, eight catches, 162 receiving yards, and a touchdown. Touchdown in three of his last four games, a ceiling of 30 fantasy points, like we just said. Um, 
listen, I was pretty low on Addison this past week because it was not a good matchup and he's been very inconsistent on the season. But uh, if he's going to see this type of involvement, we got to bump him up to a flex option. It's just like I said last week, it's like it's so hard to call when Jordan Addison is actually going to give you production and can end up really hurting you. And last week was one of the worst possible matchups. That Bears secondary is no joke. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to flex Addison, I'm good with it. It's going to be hard not to with a uh, touchdown in his last two games and 15 or more fantasy points in his last two games. Uh, okay matchup against the Cardinals this week. So you want to flex Addison. I'm not against it, but just understand he's been very inconsistent for majority of the season. And it's tough to call when he is going to give you production, but the production has been there in three of the last four games. So he's a flex option this week. We'll leave it at that. Jalen Naylor did have a touchdown this past week, but just 7.5 fantasy points. And the last two games where he has scored a touchdown, 7.7 or less points. So let's set Jalen Naylor going into week 13. So we have the Rams who will travel to face these Saints and these Rams wide receivers. I am starting them no matter what on a weekly basis. And I said that going into week 12. I had some concerns from you guys because they're going up against the Eagles and what is a very stout secondary, one of the best secondaries in the league right now. But you just got to roll with Cup and you got to roll with Puka. The volume's always there. Cup, 11 targets, 8 catches, 60 receiving yards, and a touchdown, 20 fantasy points. I know the touchdown was like in garbage time, but he scored the touchdown. Who cares? Puka Nakua, 13 targets, 9 catches, 117 receiving yards, 20.7 fantasy points. They've both been extremely productive with 15 or more fantasy points in every game since week eight between both wide receivers, except for the uh, Mike Tyson game there for Puka Nakua in week nine against Seattle. But ultimately, super high production, very good floors, very good ceilings for both Puka and Cup. Start them. Anybody else at wide receiver on this team, I have no confidence and there's no consistency. Demarcus Robinson is the next most startable player. But even him, it's very, very difficult to call when he's going to give you production. So everyone else is a sit. Then we got the Saints, who I don't even know if they have more than one healthy wide receiver on this team. But um, they got one at least, and that's uh, Marquez Valdez-Scatling. And uh, he's a good flex option this week. It's a good matchup against the Rams. And uh, 16.7 or more fantasy points in his last two starts, three touchdowns in his last two starts. Fire up MVS in the flex if you want. I said the same thing going into week 11, and uh, he sits at just 36% roster. This might be a player that you can grab up off the waiver wire. So I think MVS is a solid flex option this week. Um, anybody else? I don't know if there's anybody else on this roster. You got uh, Cedric Wilson. You got Mason Tipton, uh, who's a healthy scratch in his last game. I mean, the, like, is there anybody else? Can someone let me know in the comments? Is there any other Saints wide receiver who's alive? Let's flex MVS and let's keep starting Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup going into week 13. Except we got the Buccaneers traveling to face the Saints. Mike Evans and his return from dealing with a hamstring injury. Low ceiling. Okay, floor. 11.8 fantasy points. Six targets. Five grabs. 68 receiving yards so mike evans good enough matchup here against the panthers the panthers are not just this team that like we can start everybody against and they just absolutely suck i kept saying that last week and not enough people were listening to me but whatever mike evans still a good start this week you want to roll with him he's completely fine d hop scored a touchdown against this secondary this past week you can keep rolling with mike evans and if you own him you probably want to start him Anybody else, Sterling Shepard, Jalen McMillan, there's just not enough production here, not enough consistency. Bucky Irving, Rashad White, Kate Otten, those are the guys taking up the volume after Mike Evans. It's not the wide receiver. So, yeah, I'm not starting any other wide receiver on this Bucks team. Now, it's a good matchup for Xavier Leggett and Adam Thielen. Uh, Thielen kind of eased back in this past week as he returned from injury himself, dealing with the hamstring injury. He had four targets, 8.7 fantasy points. Leggett had six targets, 9.6 fantasy points. Jalen Coker missed this past week with a quad injury, which led David Moore to 20 fantasy points against the Chiefs, 10 targets, six grabs, 81 receiving yards, and a touchdown. He had not had more than five targets in a single game on the season and four or less targets in every other game. So maybe keep an eye on David Moore. I'm not chasing those 20 fantasy points, even in a good matchup, but Leggett 
Thielen, good matchups here. You're desperate for a flex option. You can start them. But once again, this is one of those weeks. I don't know why you'd really be desperate for a flex option. Dynasty, deeper leagues, 16-man leagues, whatever, maybe. But ultimately, they're flexible due to the matchup, but I'm not going out of my way to start either Panthers wide receiver here in Week 13. Final game of the afternoon slate is the Eagles. And the Ravens should be a fun one. Let's start with those Eagles wide receivers. A.J. Brown tried to give you guys a lot of confidence in going into Week 12 in a good matchup against the Rams. He came through for you. It was a little scary there for a second, but he did catch a touchdown off of seven targets, six receptions, and 109 receiving yards, 22.9 fantasy points. We kept kind of talking throughout the week like this should be a high ceiling week for A.J. Brown as he had had 15.9 or less in every game since week eight. Came through for you guys. Good start, and he's a good start again against a Ravens secondary that's been awful all season long. I do have to record these before Monday Night Football, so if anything happens with these Ravens wide receivers or uh, if they really show up against the Chargers wide receivers, I don't care. I'm still starting A.J. Brown on a weekly basis, and If Devonta Smith was healthy in Week 12, I think he would have also bounced back against the Rams. And if he's healthy for Week 13, he's in a good bounce back spot. I'm not losing my faith in Devonta Smith. He has single digits three times on the season, two of those as of late in Weeks 10 and Week 11, but he's given you double digits in every other game on the season, 14 or point excuse me, 14.9 or more fantasy points in every other game on the season. So I have not lost my faith in Devonta Smith, and I'm keeping my faith in him in a great matchup against the Ravens and what should be a very good game script and competitive overall game between the Eagles and the Ravens. Anybody else here on this team who plays wide receiver, uh, I would not start whatsoever we were to combine every other wide receiver on this team in week 12 we have two total targets and one catch which went to Jahan Dotson so uh everybody else is a sit don't even need to put anyone else on the screen we start Brown we start Smith in the story now once again I have to rem- uh, record this before Monday Night Football so if anything changes any major injury w- with the Ravens wide receivers it'll be in a pinned comment down below um, I'm leaving Zay Flowers in the flex area because this Eagles secondary whew, they are pretty good I know they didn't quite show up against the Rams but uh, I do kind of worry about Zay Flowers in this matchup, but you just never know with Zay Flowers. He can have 29 fantasy points like Week 9. He can have 7.4 in a shootout game in Week 10. He can have 11.9 against Pittsburgh. I mean, even with scoring a touchdown, it, it's, he's all over the place. Tons of upside. The floor is not really safe, but he's a good flex option on a weekly basis, and this should be a nice competitive game script. So if you want to roll with Zay Flowers, that's fine. Maybe he has a massive game in week 12 against the Chargers and our confidence changes. Maybe he's another bad game. Either way, he just kind of lives in the flex area. He's still your wide receiver 12 at the time I'm recording this on the season. So the production has been there. It's just been a little bit inconsistent, but even then he only has single digits in four games on the entire season. Anybody else? Deontay Johnson. Uh, does he play football? Can somebody let me know? Uh, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, not going to be starts for me going into week 13. Let's move along into Sunday night football. And this one's going to be kind of interesting to go over. We got the Niners traveling to face the Bills. So maybe I showed a little bit too much confidence last week in the Niners wide receivers. We talked about this being a game like we're going to find out is Purdy really a true system quarterback and anybody just come in and run this offense. My answer has always been no. I've been a Brock Purdy believer since day one. He's my most drafted quarterback on underdog last year. We'll talk about that in the quarterbacks video, but yeah, uh, I don't think anyone can just step in and run this offense as we saw a parent this past week from Brandon Allen, and the Niners wide receivers really suffered from that, including Johan Jennings and Debo Samuel. So they're flexible, I guess. It's going to depend. Does Brock Purdy play this week? If he does, that's probably going to mean that Jennings and Debo are okay. But even at that point, they're still just flex options because 
Purdy's playing with a hurt throwing shoulder. I know he's practiced this week at the time recording this and thrown, but the Bills secondary is great. They're one of the best teams in the league against opposing wide receivers. So I don't know. I got a bad feeling about this Niners uh, offense this week, but if Purdy plays Jennings, Debo, they're startable, but what's the real ceiling? Debo 6.1 or less fantasy points in his last two games. Jennings at least got you nine points, which the way that game went against the Packers, nine points, you're probably like, thank God I got nine points, but this was still awful, right? Uh, Ricky Pearsall doesn't have a catch in the last two games. So listen, like it's really going to depend on the status of Brock Purdy, but even then I'm a little shaky on the Niners offense going into the week. And I got a bad feeling that the Bills could put the final nail in the coffin on the Niners season here in week 13. Okay, I know the way that division is playing out right now it probably technically wouldn't be the final nail in the coffin, but it might be close. And this could be a big night for the Buffalo Bills coming off of their bye week. But with that being said, when we look at the uh, Bills wide receivers here, I don't really trust anybody other than Khalil Shakir, who's given you double digits in every game he's played in except for week six of the season. Very safe floor for Khalil Shakir on a weekly basis. The Niners, if anything, they're playing pretty good against opposing wide receivers, but I would start Khalil Shakir with confidence. He's going to get you 10 points at worst and hopefully gets you more than that. Uh, the last four games, he has 11 or more fantasy points in each game with a ceiling of 19.9 points. So he's startable. Now, everybody else, Amari Cooper. Keon Coleman, who may or may not play this week as he is still dealing with a wrist injury. Curtis Samuel, who had a big week in week 11 against the Chiefs. And Mac Hollins. Um, I mean, what are we? This has got to be the most convoluted wide receiver room in the league, even with the Packers and Bears being out there, right? Like, I'll start Khalil Shakir. I, I mean, if you really feel like you can call a production on any of these other wide receivers, go for it. But I feel good about Shakir. I don't really feel good about anybody else here. But any of these guys can pop off like Curtis Samuel did in the Bills' last game. Maybe Coleman's back, and he's good to go and has a big game. Maybe Cooper comes through. I don't know. But I'm not going to try and call it for your fantasy lineups or my fantasy lineups, leaving everyone as a sit except for Khalil Shakir when it comes to the Bills' wide receivers in Week 13. And last but not least, we've got the Browns traveling to face the Broncos on Monday Night Football. So, I mean, what are you going to do with this Browns wide receiver room? We just talked about convoluted wide receiver rooms. I mean, they're a good example as well. Jerry Judy had 14.5 fantasy points in a tough matchup in week 12 in the snow. Six targets, six catches, 85 receiving yards. Uh, I still think Judy is probably the most startable player out of this bunch, but I don't want to just leave Elijah Moore and Cedric Tillman like in the dust here because once again, I mean, Tillman got hurt, got the concussion, my, may or not play this week. Elijah Moore, I mean, it was a snow game, very bad, you know, circumstances there. Judy just really happened to come through, catch every single ball that was thrown to him. Then it's a tough match of uh, Pat Sertain, the Broncos, all that stuff. But we talked about Jacoby Myers earlier. He had a huge game against the Broncos this past week. So listen, I'm still okay flexing any of these guys. Although I will say once again, Jerry Judy is the only player that I actually have confidence in. Those of you guys in deeper formats, dynasty, you're desperate. Tillman plays this week. Sure. Elijah Moore, uh, maybe. But the reason being is because we know the Browns are going to throw the football first and foremost. This past week, even in the snow, they still threw the football 27 times. And Jameis Winston's last three starts, he's thrown the football 41 or more times. So they will throw the football this week, and it's not the best matchup for Nick Chubb. It's okay. The Broncos have moved back in terms of the ranking against the run. But ultimately, Winston's going to go out there and sling it. That's what he does. And yeah, we're going to get a Jameis Winston type performance. So that could be very good for Jerry Judy and company. I have the most confidence in Jerry Judy, but the other two, if they're healthy, are worth flex consideration. But I would really only try to consider them if I'm in deeper formats. So moving along, Cortland Sutton, a player I talked about a ton in the offseason. I know the beginning of the season was really rocky, but man, he has been on fire as of late one of my must start players the last two weeks in the must start videos 29.7 fantasy points in week 12 
10 targets, 8 catches, 97 receiving yards, 2 touchdowns, 14.8 or more fantasy points in every game since week 8. This offense throwing the football has become very efficient. Bo Nix looks fantastic. We've also been talking about Bo Nix for weeks and weeks here on the channel. He's your wide receiver 6 on the season, if you can believe that. And he had a goose egg in week seven. He had five or 7.8 or less fantasy points in three games on the season. And a goose egg. And he's your wide receiver six. He's playing fantastic. This is a fantastic matchup for Cortland Sutton. He is a must start player moving forward and in week 13. The next man up, who's the beneficiary of the Broncos throwing the football well, is Devon Vele, who we like to kind of. Early in the season, showed some sparks, 11.9 points in week one, 11.8 in week six as he missed uh, weeks two through five. But in the past three weeks, 10.6 or more fantasy points, double digits in three straight games. His best fantasy day this past week on the whole season with 14 fantasy points. Um, You know, the offense is talking him up. They want to get him more involved. Uh, He's getting the looks. This is a good matchup. He's in that flex area, one of the top waiver wire ads, sitting at 13% rostered going into week 13 in a good matchup. Anybody else here, just not enough consistency. I know we're seeing some you know, nice plays out of Marvin Mims here and there, some nice plays out of Troy Franklin, and don't forget about Lil Jordan Humphrey either, but not enough consistency. I know everyone balled out against the Atlanta Falcons, um, but ultimately... Not enough consistency out of those guys, and they didn't quite show up against the Raiders. So Sutton, Vele, the startable players here when it comes to the Broncos, wide receivers, everybody else is a sit going into week 13. That'll do it for today's video. There's every single wide receiver, every single matchup, and who you should be starting or sitting as we move into week 13 of the season. Don't forget, guys, as always, I'm answering all fantasy football questions in the comment section down below. So if you guys have any questions moving into week 13, please drop me a comment down below. I'll get every single question cleared before Thursday's games, before Friday's game, and before Sunday's and Monday's game as well. And on top of that, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because we're going to have every single thing you guys could need as the week progresses to help you dominate week 13 of the fantasy season. So make sure you don't miss out on any of the content by hitting that subscribe button down below. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.